The first step of the installation phase is to prepare the panel for the new monitor. And I have an ancillary panel that's going to go here that's going to provide a water pump and the DSI fault LED indication plus the ability to turn the monitor on and off. And so we have a blank panel here that we want to remove. We'll put this panel on in temporarily so we can mark the holes that we have to drill. And we've got the holes drilled and this plate will cover the holes. I pulled the convenience center out and what I have is the circuit board and I noticed the yellow wire is the water pump LED and the last wire on this connector which is the pink wire is for the DSI fault so we have to pull those two off the board and wire them into these LEDs. I wired a new panel in, turned the switch on and I got power. This will be power to the monitor and then we have LEDs for the water pump and the DSI fault. Now we have to wire up both of the LEDs, the DSI fault and the water pump and that is from the yellow wire goes to the water pump so we'll cut that off and the pink wire goes to the DSI fault and we'll cut this off for some unknown reason if we ever need to put this back then we have enough wire we can do that and then we simply twisted the wires together soldered them and put some heat shrink on it we test the water pump we can see the light so we're all set now one issue I came across was I designed this bezel on a similar panel as this and it had the same convenience center as this does. However, this panel is different because this awning switch does not give me enough room to put this in properly. So it really kind of interferes with this screw here. So I had to redesign the bezel and I'm going to have to put a flathead screw in there so that it'll lay down. So on my website, I will keep both designs. One is kind of a universal bezel and the other one will be a bezel specifically for RVs that may have an obstruction. And I was able to countersink this screw and then now this bezel will fit in here just fine. And it turned out that I just had enough room that I put a clearance hole in here and I can get to that flathead screw behind there. So I can indeed remove this panel without having to remove the bezel. And with the bezel in, it's just a matter of now turning the power on and you can look at the battery and then of course we don't have any tanks hooked up yet. Now it does stick out a little bit maybe it was four millimeter but you know there's not much you can do about that that's just kind of the way it is. And now we get to the fun part of this project we have to remove the bottom of the RV uh, at least enough to get to the tanks so I have to take out all these bolts here and hopefully I can roll this whole thing back to about where the wheels are. And here we've removed the bottom from the RV and it's just laying on the ground. And one of the things that just bugs me whenever I work on an RV project is you got to fix stuff that they didn't do at the factory. And here's an example. This wire was all just stuffed up underneath. You know, it just came falling down when they pulled the bottom. So now I have to stop and fix what they didn't do right before I can continue. And here we have our fresh water tank, our first one. And we've just uh, put some heat shrink butt connectors on there. And then we have this wiring loom that will go over that. And then we can uh, tape the end of it. I found to get this to stick properly. <laughs> I have to sand the side of the honing tank, otherwise the sensor won't stick. And then what I do is I take some nice propyl alcohol and rub it on there to clean it up. And it doesn't really look all that pretty, but the thing is, is it's stuck and I try to stay away from this walnut as much as possible because you're supposed to stay two inches away from metal. And so that is actually a little bit curved here. Well, we have all four sensors in. There is the gray tank. And the black tank is right there. And the galley is there. And we had to cut the galley tank to four inches because that was a smaller holding tank. And the freshwater tank is all the way to the back of the RV. And I put a little Gorilla Tape on the bottom of here just to help give it some uh, security while the adhesive sets because this does curve just a little bit. And the next step is to cut the hole out for the panel in the wet bay. 
and that's what we did here. Now, of course, it does go without saying that you got to make sure that you have clearance behind wherever you're going to go and you're not going to cut into any wires. Now, it's not really all that easy to cut into metal like that. I found the best tool by far is something like this pneumatic reciprocating saw and it's small enough to get into there and actually it cuts almost like butter, really. And then here's a little pro tip. I put some tape on the end it kind of helps it from backing out because it'll kick back and if you're not prepared you can gouge the paint and i do want to make it waterproof behind the bezel that goes on here just in case any water splashes down so i'm just going to make kind of like a little gasket here kind of like that and we want to put this bezel on before just so the sealant has a little time to cure well, then we'll take a little isopropyl alcohol and, and just clean this up and now it's time to put the finishing touches on the panel and I'm using little nylon washers on the end of these screws. And I probably should get a paint pen and just paint these black. And for those of you that have watched some of my previous videos, you know that I have used this fish tape for quite some time. And at least I call it a fish tape. It's a wire pull. It actually works quite well. I found something that's maybe even a little better and it's kind of the same idea but there's a couple big differences. Number one, this is 50 foot and this is about 15 or 20 foot I think. Basically it has the same ends but this one is a little more stout than this. In fact you can bend it a little bit if you have to to get the kinks out or to maybe uh, avoid an obstruction or something. And it wasn't very expensive, and I'll put a link on that on my website as well. And then I just uh, finished the snake job by pulling my wire through. And we can look at all the tanks. Uh, we have 0% on all four tanks. And there's also a diagnostics mode. And for example, if I push in the black tank, and then the battery, it says P, that's the power level at 50, which is good. And the height is six inches. And if you recall from earlier in the video, I had to shorten the galley tank. So we'll press that. And we'll see that that's been shortened to four inches. And we've attached a water hose to the tank. And we have the system set up in power fill. So we're gonna fill our fresh water tank and we turn on the water we can hear it flowing i'll turn the monitor on and then we want fresh water and i'm going to depress it twice we have a five minute reading we're reading four percent now we're eight percent And we're at 13%. I'm going to turn the water off. So it looks like we have about a 4% resolution. But given that the OEM tank monitor, when it works, is about a 33% because there's only three sensors. So 4% resolution is something I can deal with. And there we go. We are also measuring 13%. So everything's working good. Now the last step after we've confirmed everything's working is to seal this all up again with some of this, whatever you call it.